Hey, what's up? It's Black Moon just here with this short production video about how to cut the monotony out of your beats, which is something that we kind of have an issue with when we're sampling. You kind of want to keep the essence of the sample without it just dragging on consistently. You don't really know what you're listening to. So this is what I got right now. This is the track I'm working on for a tape I'm putting out sometime soon within the next couple months if I get everything sorted out the way I need it to. But this is where we get into stuff like uh, low pass filters, automation, chopping, sampling, and using things like gross beat, which is something that comes native on FL Studio, which is a very useful thing, um, without any added effects. Well, actually, no. At the moment, the track sounds a bit like this for the intro. get into things like low pass filters chopping and gross beat right now I have a low pass filter that's automated right here and if I take that off then it will sound like this and so it's a bit brighter of a sound it's less sunken in but if you want to low pass something you can usually what I would do is put it on the master track and that's only because I like to manipulate the entire signal of the of everything that's being played every instrument i'd like to be within the same i guess scene more or less i'd like to say with that so what people could do is you could use it on certain instruments like you could use it on just the lead instead so i could put it on just the piano sample and have everything else just act normal and then only the piano dips in and out of this filter but the way i did it was i went in here added a small shelf right here so nothing above this gets played so if I were to turn it off then it's not doing anything but turn it on and then you can see this is your frequency response and this is the only spot where it's being played and then with automation you go in here and then the shaded areas are where you, it's fully active and then it's just partially and I dip it in and out and this kind of gives it a sense of movement, so you get a little bit of this, where it cuts out a little bit. And with that, you, again, like I said, you give your beat more movement, and despite the fact that the sample is just the same, you're using it a little differently. Now if I go in here and then get rid of my low pass filter, I go to track 10, which is what I have the piano on, I get rid of gross beat, which is my, um, my little chopping thing. The regular sample, with, I'll leave the delay on, but with a regular sample with delay, it sounds like this. It's, it's a pretty basic piano progression, nothing really magical about it or anything, but um, what I usually like also doing is chopping tiny bits of it, so you take like, I took this little note right here and put that little spots around the beat, so that even though the bass of the beat is still the same, you still get in there and you change the little aspects of it. And that's a lot you can pack into even just like, that's only eight bars right there. And then with that, you go into um, this other thing I like doing. Let me turn, actually, I'll, I'll leave that off for a sec. But, because then I can show you how it works. But you go in here and then each of these is like a repeat. So as it goes, do that back. As it goes, you can see that it kind of lines up with how it's played. So that's how you get those little um, those repeats, and it'll react depending on where you have it within your track. So if you have it, let's say, like automated here, it'll start there, or vice versa, or really anywhere you try to put it. But another thing that I like doing, since um, I'm trying to do lo-fi production more or less, which is a lot of aging and making sure you more or less bastardize your beats. I like cutting sixteenths out, which is just, I mean, it's arbitrary, it's kind of ridiculous sometimes, but, um, so like right here you have the drum, you have your main drum tracks right here, they're all put into this one pattern. I cut this little slot out so the piano rings through. And then you have, uh, this is the bass, this is, um, just a sample I put over it, and this is just another sample. So, like, right there, you see that? Like, it just cuts out perfectly. But if I play a little longer... 
and then that piano cut out right there. But since I have the delay on it, that piano, that last note still carries a little bit longer. So it's not in the sense that you're losing anything, but you're enhancing different sounds. And then if I bring it over here a bit, it's like you hear it cut out a little bit. And with that, you can add little um, aha moments to your beats. And then with that, you're adding more depth to it. And with that depth, you're creating kind of a soundscape for people to like listen to, latch onto, and then they'll. Some of this will be subconscious, and mostly only musicians will hear it. But it's a really good thing to have, just like music you can have for other musicians to listen to, and it's I don't know, it's just something cool that I feel like the community needs to do more. We need to get bigger into doing weird things with our music because that's kind of the art. But here we go right here. There's um few other things I'd like to get into. Let me see. Oh yeah, so right here there's another this is this is just gross beat really. Just another thing automated, but I'll let it play for a little bit. Um I'll start where the beat kicks in. See right there, I cut the bass out of it, which I did it a little bit over here too. But it's I feel as though it's more noticeable here because you have that uh, that triple snare hit right here, where it just kind of like signifies a change. And even though like you've heard it in other parts of the beat, it sounds different given context. And another thing that we need to really think about when we're talking production is context. Just because you did the same thing earlier in the beat doesn't mean everything is necessarily the same so you're able to add different moments with different things it's like adding different shades of blue depending on what your painting is so you can paint up you can use blue in almost any painting but depending on how you use it and what's around it you dress it differently and then um, in here it's just another little low pass section that I did and then uh, I have the drums coming over here too and those are low pass which I think is another cool moment to have um, low pass drums are something you hear on like uh, 95 till infinity by Joey Bet. Sorry, <laughs> by Joey Badass. There's a uh, section in the beginning, and then it comes in a little bit closer to I be like believe like midway through the track, where he's rapping over this like almost sunken in beat, and it's the same beat, the exact same beat he was using, but because there's a low pass filter, it sounds almost completely different. It cuts out a lot of frequencies that you're usually gonna hear and it emphasizes what he's saying or just the motion that you're kind of involved in. But right here we got the low pass section. If you paid attention, you notice that the drums cut, cut out right there, but then I also added a repeat. I chopped out that same little bit that I had all the way over here at the beginning. Oop, I'm messing up. But the same little bit that I had over here and then that I cut out of the front, and it's just something that I used as a marker for the next section so that it just, I mean, because more or less your memory is just not going to pick up on the fact that you heard it earlier because, again, context. You heard it differently this time. And now, then at the end, I have another section where it's just low pass and then it cut, kicks out a little bit. But a lot of things that I do for cutting monotony is use things like gross beat. I filter a lot. Um, the 16th thing was a thing that I just recently figured out, which I love doing it because it just adds so much more depth to your tracks. And you can do it almost anywhere. Like I have a little bit right here cut out, then a little bit right here cut out. And. You can make
make a lot of really massive moments with that. And it's just something that I feel like people need to practice a little bit more just on, because structurally this track is very simple. Like you can even look at the project file right here and you see a lot of repeats. It's a lot of patterns. It's a very simple beat, but just because it's simple in structure doesn't mean it has to be simple in sound. You can do a lot of just little strange things like automation or you can uh, chop up and edit. I mean, Gross Beat, if you have FL Studio, Gross Beat is a great thing to use for chopping it up because granted the pattern will be the same. It won't necessarily, it, again, it goes back to the whole context thing where you can make the same decision, but it'll sound very different because of what you use around it. But another thing that um, I like to do to cut out monotony is uh, there's a filter that I like using. I just need to remember where I put it. Right here. Okay. So go in here, and there's this thing called D Blue Glitch, which is a free VST they put out a while ago, but you can add a bunch of different effects to it. They have a tape stop, which gives you that rewind setting, um, a modulator, which changes the notes, well, changes the pitch of the note, retrigger, which is basically the same thing Gross Beat does, where it um, repeats a note, a shuffler, it'll pick between these two areas, and then you can. Well, you, you don't do it yourself, but the computer will pick between those two areas, and then it'll pick a note, and it'll shuffle them around. So let's say, like, you had a C to a B to a G. It might go G, B, C, or the other way around, and then you have a reverser, self-explanatory. There's a bit crusher right here, which I love using. And if you hit G on any of these, it becomes global. Or you could, uh, let's say, like, put it right here. And this, this whole thing right here is two bars. So halfway, this would be just one bar. And it'd be the second half of the section. I don't use I, I use this sequencer every now and then, but um, most of the time I'm just using a bit crusher, so that's just how I do it. Or you can use a gate, which is something that's very nice. Um, there's also a delay, a stretcher, and that's kind of it really. The gate is a cool thing to use because you can cut out volumes for certain things, and it'll come in a like a rate. It'll be like an oscillator more or less, and every so often it'll cut bits out of your beat. And that's basically it for um, cutting monotony. What are you thinking about it? Um, no, that's, that's kind of it. And again, this is a track I'm using for a tape I'm putting out sometime soon. So hopefully you'd be interested in checking that out after seeing this. You've heard what most of this beat sounds like. You can pretty much piece it together at this point. I won't play the whole thing on here because, again, waiting on the actual release. But that's it. All right, thanks for watching. Thank you.